All right, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are doing some uh, Marlite plank. This is a uh, Marlite plank is a uh, a faux wood decor system uh, that goes in. The panels, when they come in the box, are about 16 inches wide. Um, really, they're like 15 three quarters, but um, 16 inches wide and eight foot tall. Uh, one box will do 64 square feet, which is an eight by eight square. But you always cut them in half, or sometimes down to 32. And um, th this typically goes in a grocery store. Um, they used to be in fast food restaurants in the dining area, but they've switched to other products since. So the grocery store is one of the last remaining places to have this stuff. Uh, again, it's called Marlite Plank. Sorry for the shakiness. It's called Marlite Plank. And what it is, is it's pretty much compressed sawdust uh, held together with, you know, glue. And then they, uh, they put some kind of a face on it. Uh, I don't know what they, what they use to do this face. Um, it's, it's like a, you know, it's pretty much like a paint almost. Um, that's, that's what I'd have to guess it is, is just a paint. I don't know how to get the design like that, but, uh, so, you know, we cut it at four foot as with FRP and any other finish that you're doing, always leave a gap at the ground for expansion contraction. Now there's going to be a rubber base. It's going to go up four inches. And so cover, you know, you can always pin it down and do all your stuff you need to do. This one's got a big recess here, the concrete which is going to make it sit funny, but what I'll do is I'll strip it out. I'll take a piece of scrap Marlite and put it down here and keep it flush. But as usual, you run your panel down to the ground and then hold your molding up for the height of the base. Uh, the floor is already in, so we'll be exact four inches in this room. And on the, uh, on the top, this is going to have an inch and a half chair rail. I'll show you it over here. Light here and show you. Sorry if I'm giving you vertigo from walking, shaking the camera around. I know one guy commented that my videos made him made him a little nauseous. Sorry about that, dude. So anyway, this is what's going to go on top. This is actually real wood. Uh, this is the only thing that's not fake. Um, as you can see, it's got a little little chamfer up here. This is uh, I'm gonna say this is an inch and a half. Yeah, engine. So, um, you know, you, you basically you want your level line at the top. You use a laser or uh, snap lines off of a level surface. Never, never pull your lines off the floor. Okay, that's one thing I see that and it just it, it baffles me. The floor is always screwed. It's never straight. Almost. I mean, sometimes within an eighth or so. But um, when you get in a room, most likely. If it has a hard lid, when they put that in, they leveled it. So if you're, I, this is only if you're without a level or a laser. Um, pull up from the floor and get 48 and a half, and then pull down from the ceiling and see what that mark is. In this case, it was 63 and a half. Um, and then continue every corner, pull down 63 and a half, 63 and a half. Even if the ceiling is not spot on level, at least when you walk in, it'll visually match the ceiling. You know it's not going to be far off. The ceiling guys can't put in a crooked ceiling. What's even better is acoustical ceiling. When they put the grid in, the, they put the angles uh, around. Those they laser in and those are very straight. So um, if you're ever pulling uh, measurements to snap a line, always pull off the ceiling, not the floor. That's a little tip to remember. The floor, I mean, in a bathroom, I've seen the floor go an inch in, a, in, in an eight foot wall, you know, or dip down for a drain or something. Never pull off the floor. And, and when you're unlevel, I know people think, oh, uh, when you're unlevel, everything gets harder. Um, even if nobody notices it, your cuts will be harder, things will be harder because nothing lines up right. The shit's square and it's made to go in square. So practice making your cuts better and uh, stay level. So this is the profile. Let's see if I can get it to focus, of course not. Yeah, so see how it sits back a little bit right here. You know, that's where the, the plank comes up. And um, sorry, one-handed. 
um, the plank will sit against this this top edge here. Um, so basically, you'll just plop this down on it. This it'll sit on this, and then this will just kind of butt against the face. So you have all this coverage. So if your top's a little chipped up or screwed up or off level, you're all right. Um, this stuff is made to basically just sit this down, uh, cut all of it at once, and then just slam it in. Um, I take a case, which is eight foot long, I mark it, and then I uh, rip it right down the center, the whole case at one time. And uh, let me show you that. Okay, so this is the case. This is what Marlite looks like. A lot of times you can get this from a drywall supply place in your neighborhood. It's eight feet long. So, first order of business, you're cutting six pieces at once. So, you need to get them all squared up. Let's see if I can't prop this, prop this phone up over here. So get you guys all nauseous. Yeah, you know what? You won't be able to see what I'm doing. I'm going to try over here. Sorry about this. By leaving it in the box, you keep all of the edges together. So instead of having to break out clamps and everything else, with this stuff, it's all about speed. If you're not fast, you're not shit. So leave it in the box. That keeps all the edges aligned. And then whack these edges together with a hammer, a block, whatever you want to do. When you're done, ideally, this is perfectly flat. Ideally. that saw blade width just because I'm a little angle I go 47 and 7 8 a little bit heavy that way when you cut off the saw blade you're just a 64 shot on each side so I'll show you how to slide the tape later but basically put it on your straight end I'd be using safety goggles, yes. Um, I've been doing this a long time, which is no excuse. You should always wear safety goggles. Um, I like pain, so I don't sometimes. But I, I usually do. They're actually sitting around here somewhere. So you cut them down the center. Now, since this end was nice and straight, these are all nice and straight, depending on how your cut is. My cuts are 
right next to godliness. That's freehand. So, now you're going to take your plank. And this is your face right here, right? It's pretty nice. Now, when you start off of an inside corner, you don't, you don't want to put this male end um, in the inside corner because it, since it's so big, it, it'll have like a divot. If you know what I mean, the inside corner will be like a void. Yeah, sorry about that. So anyway, yeah, um, you know, if you put this in the inside corner, you're gonna see like a big void. It's gonna look really weird. So what we do, I'm really giving you guys all the goods here. There's two different ways to do this. You want this flange off. So one is to cut right along where the flange starts, right there. With a razor knife, and I'll go halfway so you can see both methods. You can even hit it twice just to be sure. And then you can come along. You don't technically need to do the knife thing, but uh, it gives you a lot cleaner line. And then, you know, if you got some levers, but again, this will be in the inside corner. Now, the reason you do that, when that goes in the inside corner, it's, it's much better. And so, the other method, which is a little faster, you're always going to have a hook knife of some sort with you. You get it this, uh, start it, you get it this perfect angle here. happen in one one pull but because I'm holding the camera so and it's not you know here's with a razor there's that method it's no different you know whatever your preference is and then uh, let me glue it up now you're gonna use solvent based for this if you try to use water base it'll get into the the fake wood there and it'll expand all over the place and the, the plank will bow really bad You'll come back a couple days later and you'll have yourself a funny looking wall. So you use solvent based. Come on, I'm doing this one handed. I'm not sure if I've uh, already put up a video on the uh, the homemade glue paddle. I don't use a trowel. I make my paddle out of FRP. That way I can adjust the uh, grooves every time I do a job. Some jobs I want fine grooves, some jobs I want wide grooves to save glue. Marlite, you don't need to be um, overly, I'm gonna have to bring the light in here, hold on. Marlite, you don't need to be overly thorough with gluing, like you don't need to get like right to the edges. Um, that solvent base sticks like that. sticks like the son of a bitch so just just get it on there good make sure your lines are good and everything and you're set so give you a little stand back here so you know this is the piece now since these are 48 my lines are all at about 48 and a half now that can jump up if the floor dips or it can go down tight but generally it'll give you room for expansion contraction to get off the ground so jam it into your channel this is a, an inside corner, just like with FRP. Just put the plank in the channel. Top and bottom, get it in the channel. And then uh, line it up at the top. Make sure you're on or under your line. Do not go over your line. Um, if you have cap up there, your cap might be nailed on first. Then just tuck into it. But if you don't, because you're doing wood like this, what I do is I put it up. Normally I would do that under the four inch mark, but because there's nothing back here, uh, I can't nail into it. I generally hold it up to get the height staying to kind of keep it there. And then I'll give it a quick rub down by hand. Some people get out the big rollers for all this. I've never used a roller in my life and uh, I haven't had a sheet fail in, in eight years. So um, rollers aren't needed, uh, but you can use one if you want. 
So anyway, I put a pin to hold it up. Now, any good Marlite man keeps a stain pin on him. So, or I just went and shot that pin through. Come back, put that crap on it. wipe it off now see the cameras showing that but in real life you actually can't see it and that darkness will lighten up in a few but um, as far as scratches let me let me show you what these pens do this I'm doing this all for you see that scratch stuff scratches pretty easily so just know that you need one of these stain pens so there's our little scratch Draw a little line on it. Wait for a second. You know, this camera's weird. It makes things look like they're there when they're not, but um, where'd it go? Oh, there it is. That was actually a pretty heavy scratch. <laughs> well, you, you get a lot of little light brush scratches every so often on this stuff, and this pen literally makes them disappear. That was kind of a heavy scratch, but see, voila, gone. Anyway, so now, now that you've got it up and you got it pinned on the bottom, give it a quick rub down, like I just did a minute ago. Now here's the thing. Okay, I'm back. Anyway, so this is the pin nailer that I use, 18 gauge uh, brad nailer. I use three quarter inch pins, you can use five eighths if you want. Um, here's where some of you might Leave me frothy comments. I pull, I pull the safety off. Um, you know that thing where you're supposed to hold it to the wall before you can pull the trigger? Um, I yank that on day one. Not because I'm trying to get rid of the safety, but because it impedes what I am trying to do. This is really hard with one hand. So, you see that little, see that little female groove there? Get back. See that there's a there's a female groove okay and the one that's wood color the the back one the lighter one you need to put a pin nail in that they send you these little clips but nobody uses that shit um, it's really hard to get back in there you cannot have a safety in your gun to do it and so um, we take the safeties off our guns. face right here. Note where your pin is going to come out of. And if you're thinking that's a little sketchy sticking my fingers in there, it is. I've, um, I have nailed my finger to the wall before. But again, I've been doing this a long time, so um, it's just routine now. So. You don't necessarily have to do it exactly how I do it. Just keep your fingers away from it. Use common sense. That's your finished product. You, now, with plank, you're going to want to set your pressure somewhere around the 80 PSI range because you really need to sink it in there. You don't want that head sticking up. It will uh, it'll make you know every piece of pain in the ass to put in. So, um, as far as how far apart, just use good judgment. You know, six, eight inches apart, ten inches apart is fine. Um, just do them all the way up and down. So typically when there's a bottom in, I'll run, you know, pop, 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 some pins. But so anyway, that is the general on Marlite plank from start to finish. You saw me cut a full case in half. Um, 
you can load all of those pieces onto a cart and do almost the whole room. What I, a lot of the times what I'll do is I'll just bring the bucket in the room. I'll lay a whole bunch of pre-cut pieces across the room. If there's not plugs everywhere, um, pre-cut pieces across the room and I'll glue three or four of them up at a time and then start, just start slamming them up. And, and you can do rooms in, in such little time. It's amazing. Some people take forever. They try to get all carpentry with this, but it, it's, it's really simple. If you use common sense, keep them straight and level, make your cuts straight, glue, go, bam, bam, bam. Um, don't overthink it. It's not rocket science. If it was, I sure as hell wouldn't be doing it. So um, that is the basics on installing Marlite plank. The corners are the same as FRP. The only difference is there's no divider bar. Um, the divider, obviously there's male and female, so it doesn't need a divider. So I'll come back later and I'll put the chair rail on top like I showed you, miter it out. Uh, I held this down because that's the height. Uh, it's the height difference. Sorry about this. Basically, when this is installed, you don't want to run into that inside corner. It'd be a pain in the ass. So I make them just right to where that goes just like that. You see that? That is perfection. Um, some people carry a little dummy piece in their bag, you know, a little two, three inch piece of this chair rail. Um, it's not a bad idea. Um, I, I don't, I know the measurements, three quarters in my head. Um, so make sure everything's level and bang it out. If you guys have any questions, please uh, feel free to comment. Um, let me know what's going on.